Praise the Lord, friend. Thomas Matthew the fourth here. I heard this word so clearly. The Lord said, fire, 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 fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of inspiration. The fire of passion. The fire of God coming into situations to change things, change you, change others. This is the missing ingredient in most people because there's nothing that fire can't purify. I'm talking about spiritual fire. I'm talking about mental cleansing. I'm talking about, uh, you know, the, the, the spiritual aspect of glory because everything came from the invisible world to the visible world. So you need more of the touch of heaven. You know, somebody said there's nothing that more anointing can't fix. It's true because the anointing makes you also obey the laws of God, which then work for you. Because someone could think, oh, is it just spiritual things that matter? Don't I have to obey the natural? Oh, absolutely. I mean, you, gotta, you, you, got, you also have to work the natural. You know, you got to work in the natural arena of, of things, for things to happen. But you get more fired up to do that when God... When God's power touches you. So, I heard the Lord say fire. You know, I speak prophetically what he's saying. You know that about me. Uh, I'm going to tell you what God is saying, whatever that is, on any given day. So, the Lord is... Uh, very serious about this this touch he wants to bring to us you need healing you get you get healed by by that but i want to talk more about life's purpose it becomes more possible when you're full of the spirit of god <laughs> And full of the full of the power of God, everything is going to get fixed and sorted. And guess what? You're going to hear His instructions. Then He's going to begin to talk to you about what He wants you to do next. That has to be the emphasis now for so many people. I know all of us need to absolutely hear so clearly, you know, exactly what's on His agenda for the next moment that is absolutely crucial because God made a place for you to be he needed a people he made a people for you to be with he needed a people for you to work with and he made a, made a people to work with you he has a tribe of people somewhere for you a lot of people are like single and lonely and not in a lot of great relationships or enough great relationships, well then you're, you're disjointed somehow. We need to be full of relationships and all, the, all of the people, places, things, events, situations, organization, structure, administration, productivity, creativity, uh, equipment, you know, uh, ability, skill, excellence, all the things you need to be moving for you to have that productive life that you're, you're longing for. And without all that, things are not how they should be. And that's the way that things get produced. It's the only way that things get produced. Through any great life, there's a lot of activity. I, I had a, an app open up on my phone that's like the Android for vehicles when I was driving somewhere, plugged it in and certain 
a certain thing that setting that I hit on the Bluetooth will cause that to go on. And it went on. Usually I, I go, ah, that's not what I wanted. But this time I, I started, there was a message, a, a couple of messages that I, that I had recorded of uh, uh, a flow of, of conversation with people. And I, and I said, let me just listen to this right now. Let me just listen to this right now. And it was amazing how the first conversation was a prayer and prophecy from a great couple in the Midwest. Uh, some pa they're pastors of a church in some state out there, Missouri or Michigan or somewhere, I don't know. I can't remember. And it was great. It was great, absolutely awesome with the content. I was listening to that again going, amen, wow, it was a, pr a, pr a prophetic prayer thing. I thought, yeah, that's invoking some fire uh, of thought on this particular subject about my life and ministry. The next one was a conversation with a woman of God from uh, overseas who's uh, in America now and was reminding me of how kind I was to them many years ago when they helped me with something in the ministry. And I was like, wow, and I had totally forgotten all of that. I didn't remember any of that. I was being reminded like, wow, where was that? And what did I do? And what did I say? And where was I at? And it talked about churches I was preaching in. I don't even remember what I, the church I was in or talked about, but I remember the, the setting when they, as they were reminding me of what happened. And I thought, this is great. And we were talking about the move of God that happened years ago there and in a certain part of uh, the world and, and uh, in the USA. And I was like, and I said, um, I said, let it happen again like that. Because it seems like right now I'm not seeing some similar dimensions in all arenas of where, what, what, what's going on now, that that's actually happening. And I was like, that's exciting to be reminded of that. It's stirring up the fire of passion for what God wants to do now in our day. Again, I wanted to say this. I heard this from the Lord before I came on here. I heard this from the Lord. The Lord said to me, uh, what you had that was good before, believe for it to be again. And even greater this time in greater dimensions because you're not the same person you were back then. You know a lot more. You're a lot more mature, a lot more developed, a lot more. And, uh, and I thought, yeah. So don't always think that what was of yesteryear is no good anymore because there were a lot of things that were great about what happened before good memories, the move of God, things that were powerful that happened, anointings that move. Oh, yes. But it, but it would be a lot greater now because you're a different person. You've, you've developed. You've evolved upward. I don't mean evolve like from another species. I mean, you've metamorphosized, if I can make a word out of that. You've, you've, you've developed. You've changed. You've increased. You've improved. You've learned a lot. You become a different person by the knowledge you receive and the, through life experiences. But, so like, look here, many people have had setbacks and attacks, losses of their inspiration and fire and their way, their direction, their way in life. You know what I mean? The path you're on. Guess what will remedy that? Guess what will fix that? I, I'm telling you, this is all thus saith the Lord. This is prophecy in motion here. Ah, yeah, I feel the anointing. This is this is prophecy in motion. I am prophesying to you, and to me, and to everybody else that's living and moving on the earth. The remedy for adversity is the fire of the Holy Ghost. I mean, for God to touch you so strong that you become anesthetized to adversity, you you don't remember it anymore. You could be going through some terrible things right now, but the Lord will. Get you out of them. They're very temporary. You know, be of good cheer for I've overcome the world. John 16, 33, Jesus said. Toward the end of the chapter, I think it's 16, 33. Be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. I've overcome already. You're an overcomer because I'm an overcomer. And then the other one that says, we're more than conquerors through him who loved us first. And then, uh, how would you say? Uh, 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 the Lord is my light and my salvation. 
Everything else is down because we're up. But to get up, you need the power of God to touch you. Are you understanding what I'm saying? This is vital. This is vital. This is vital. This is vitality in reality. Vitality in reality. Oh, that's good. And uh, the Lord said, fire. I am releasing right now fire from heaven upon you, my friend. Son, daughter, peer, friend, associate, comrade, <laughs> ministry worker, business, entrepreneur, person working like employed, you know, you want to go up in things. You know, you get enough excellence working in your life, which starts by the power of God touching you and the gifting and grace of God touching you supernaturally and then forming in you you know then you begin to increase increase comes from excellence let me say that I love that that's powerful increase comes from excellence 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 it comes from excellence That's what it comes from. Increase into success will come from, from excellence touching you. The excellence of, of, of God's own creative glory. <laughs> That's what will fix your life. That's what will cause heaven to just erupt on the scene and give you new things like you've, you've, you've never had before, you know. The glory and the grace that you want and need to succeed. Ooh, Lord, I'm prophesying here. The glory and the grace that you need to succeed. Yes, Lord. It comes from heaven. It comes from God's own reward system. It comes from God's own greatness. So my exhortation and challenge to you is to cry out to God today and get with the program of heaven. Whatever you're stuck to and whatever's tied to you and whatever you're stuck in, whatever that is, you need to exude, exert, extend, execute vengeance upon it. I mean, just like hit it with a hit it with a sword, hit it with a stick, hit it with a rod, hit it, hit it. Let's say like, no, I'm not going to be stuck here. I'm not going to be tied to this. Somebody, some guy wrote, sent me a book yesterday. I don't know if I can say the title. It's got a little bit of a cussy kind of, you know. Donald Trump put out a book one time. He says, uh, think big and kick assurance, you know, starts with that word, three, three letters. And the publishers told him to change it. It's too offensive, but he left it like that anyway. I got past the title and got into the book and thought it was, you know, some brilliant stuff in there. Like, think big and kick, you know, you know what. You know what I mean? In life. In life, yeah, in life. If you want to be successful in business, I mean, he really tore it up in business. He did it a lot by creating a name for himself. Put his name on everything and made a brand out of it. And just like, it just worked. It just rang. You know, a lot of that is psychological warfare. You know, he said... You can't succeed in anything. He quote from him. He said, you can't succeed in anything that you don't believe you're great. You don't have greatness in. You don't know that you can win. Like when he ran for office, he said, I know if I'm going to run for office, I'm running to win, and I will win. And he did win. So the guy's got something going on with that. And, uh, well, anyway, this one book was sent to me to read it, to, like, give a review. I got it late last night funny title. I, can't, I don't know if I should say the title. Something about being stuck, okay? It's not good, there's another word there, to be stuck, right? And I thought, this is interesting. That's true. So that was like another little confirmation. I didn't get to read it, but I, I looked at like a, a couple of paragraphs, but I'll, I'll read through it and give my opinion on what I'm reading for this gentleman that kindly sent it to me before he goes to publishing on it. 
he wants uh, a review from me on it. So I, I, I want to tell you, whatever's causing you to be stuck, you have to break it. Any familiarity, any routine, the rigmarole, the word comes from rigor mortis, means stiff. You know, when someone's gone, they get stiff, right? You know that? Rigor, rigor mortis. Rigor moreau means you're stiff and stuck. You're in the same routine. It's like you're dead. Don't be like that. I want to speak in different kind of tones. Whoa, what an anointing hand. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for this. You must get unstuck. That is the word of the living God. That is the word of the Lord. You need to get unstuck. We don't have so much time to do things because the world is changing so much. And I heard a, a major prophet was speaking that he said he was getting this from the Lord, that these will be the days of the unexpected things happening, like crazy things, the thing like you thought could never happen. Like, oh, no, that's not happening. He said, this is gonna, these things are going to be happening in the world. Very volatile uh, time we're in. Very evil. Evil is on the earth. And evildoers, crazy things, you know. So, like, you want to really be solidified in God any time in the world. I mean, I don't know what generation what didn't have evil in it. You know, back in the 1400s or 1500s, they would torture people to death for things they didn't like them doing in horrific ways, like burning them alive and all that. You know, so that wasn't a good time, if you look at that. And the lifespan of people was low because of all the diseases. Then you had the bubonic plague, the black plague, the black death that went across Europe and killed millions. And then you had the scourges of wars, and then you had these other religions and what, killing people, doing all kinds of things. Said like uh, almost like three quarters of a billion people have been slaughtered by this other religion, you know, in the history since it was invoked back in uh, when it was started. Well, all the people that did that, they're all in hell, burning in fire. They didn't get no reward that they thought they would get. It's, that's a myth. It's not happening. So, you know, the Lord is uh, is is is. His word is true. He's serious when he said there's two ways to go when you die, one or the other. And we know there's no other name under, under heaven where by men can be saved, but by the name of Jesus Christ, the, the King of glory, the Son of the living God. That's it. So, uh, volatile days. And I don't want to really go into that because I don't feel like, I want to think about it too much. What I'm thinking about, because, you know, you, you could get really distraught and become fearful and feel nervous about, like, oh, what, what are we doing in this world? What, what is going on in our world that we're living in? You know, it's too much. Yeah, that could be overwhelming, so don't dwell on it. Here's the wisdom. Here's the wisdom. Here's the wisdom of the Lord. Don't dwell on it. Dwell on what's going to fix your life. Dwell on... What his instruction is to you. Dwell on what's next for you. I'm doing that. What's next for me? I'm getting it all. I'm, I'm moving in it. Because you you cannot. Um, be doing 20 different things correctly. You got to do one or two or three things. That's it. Strongly. Fiercely. In order of priority. Uh, based on the assignment of heaven, based on the assignment of the Lord, on what he's instructed you to do, that's it. And that's what needs to be focused on in our day right now. I'm seeing a beautiful rainbow here. I want to take a... Oh, my God. Rainbows in the sky. That's beautiful. I'll show you this later. I've been taking pictures of the clouds and the sky... I have a whole collage, oh my God, and I can't believe I'm, I've been so busy, I wanna share these. I'll make just the whole like collage and I'll put it on the social media. Oh my, so, um, so you can see them. Great, great apostle of the, of, of the Lord, very famous, 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 world-renowned man of God. 
He's an A-lister. You know, I call the A-listers like those top 50 guys in the earth that everybody knows their name. Even the top 10 or 20, he's in there. He's one of the major generals. And I'm not comparing anybody together, but you know, you got famous people, okay? Famous preachers that are on TV a lot. You know what I mean? And they, ha they have a famous name. Let me not name any names right now, but because if I say one, then I have to say all the others. But you know what I mean? Think about who you think about you see on a TV that's very famous for being a minister, okay? A uh, preacher, televangelist, whatever you want to say. Well, he's one of them. And he said, oh, I wish, he said, Thomas Manton, I wish he loves me so much. I love him so much. He said, too much, too, 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 too also. He said, I wish you put more pictures of yourself. We, we could see more of, of you. He says, you, you look like Jesus, more like Jesus. He says, your hair flowing and your... It's so great. He was just marveling at all that, you know, saying that on, on, his, on his television broadcast. Imagine. Today. 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 A few, a few hours ago. And uh, what an honor. So, the point of that is people need to see more of you. They need to see your image. They need to see your difference. So, here's another thing. Why would you take so much time, and this is in the vein of what I'm saying here, why would you, and I'm talking about the fire of God, the touch of God, the will of God, okay, the fire will produce the will, I mean, you will get more in tune with heaven, so I want to make that premise very strong, but I want to say this, I want to say this, Don't, do not take time on things that are not promoting what you are supposed to be doing. You need to dive into the assignment. If your assignment is to serve a man of God, you need to be doing it. If your assignment is to be preaching to people as a minister, if God's called you into that office, if he has, you need to be doing that. If you're called to be an entrepreneur in business, you need to be working on your business. And you need to stay employed until your business pays more pays you more consistently and definitely than your uh, 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 job did. If you're doing a side business and you start to work it, I mean, the minute you need more time to do more and you've already got a solid base of income to take care of your own needs, if God didn't call you to be on that job but he wants you to be working in your own business, you need to jump. And this is a jump time. I, I hear the Lord saying this. It's a jump time for a lot of people. For this new month, you know, there's some people that do like a, a word for the month. Let me do it now since we just crossed over into the new month. I might as well, might as well do a little of that. So the new month for the new season, the number of new beginnings. The day of new beginnings, you know, this month of new beginnings of the number of eight. Uh, it's a jump time. It's a jump moment. From whatever, whatever, whatever you've been stuck in, whatever's kept you stuck, whatever's kept you in the muck, you know, the muck and the mire, problem, how can I say, you know, just same old, same old, not getting done all that you need to get done. This is a tragedy before the Lord. And he's the one you need to impress. Not that everything you could do can impress him because he knows everything about you. He knows everything about everything. But you want to please him. You want him to be the happiest one. There was a song that a dear friend wrote called, You'll Be Happy at My House. Talking to the Lord. You'll be happy at my house. That's a cool little song. Oh my. You'll be happy at my house. Is God happy at your house? Are you happy at your house? If you're not, then there's another house. If, if, uh, if you're not getting all you need to be done, you don't have enough relationships helping you in those arenas. If you're not moving in energy and power and glory enough to the point of getting things done, all that you need to be done in the ways you need to do them in, then it's, it's like you're not in the right, 
You're not in the right environment. You're not working enough with all the people that you need to be working with. And this is, this is, this is, this is important. So it's a time to get unstuck. It's a time to get more motivated and get more fired up. It's a day and an hour and a season now for you to move into the destiny plan of heaven. I'm prophesying here. It's a, it's a day and an hour when you need to cry out for the fire of God to touch you, for his anointing to touch you, because that's what makes people be able to do what they need to do and to excel into excellence and success by the gifting and grace of God and the refining of that gift and all of that. You know, you ever notice people that are doing great things and you think it's just like them? They're just special and different. No, they're, they're anointed. And there are people in the world that do things. Why? I mean, they're evil. They're evildoers, people that are not even saved, but they get things done and they accomplish things in business. Why? Because they're motivated. You look at their routines and their schedules. They're doing it, man. They're getting up early. They're uh, 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 working the thing hard. They are doing that. So one guy, you know, he's definitely not saved that I can see. Not a church boy, but he has his own television program now. He became a, like a, 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 a mega real estate broker in New York. And he went there like as a young guy, like do or die, he has to make it. Now he's making millions of dollars and he's on his own television program. But he, he, he has his own television program on the cable, on the cable, you know, the, they, they signed him up to do a program on him. And he's become famous in that. Now he's attracting more business through that fame of that, that hurdle that he jumped over into success and that thing. But he says, like, he wakes up at five in the morning. He said, people that dilly-dally with their time, they don't go to bed early enough. They're lazy in that. That's true. You know, we all need a slap about that. Lazy enough not to sleep on time. Keep the regimen of schedule on time so you can get up in the morning and kick it and get more done from the early morning hours. A lot of people aren't morning people. You know, it's, it's tough for some people. But you have to do it. You have to do it. You have to have more productive hours in a day. And I believe it's by the fire of God touching you first and then revelation from him coming about the use of time that you need to begin to use your time more wisely and get on with the program. Father, let the conviction of your spirit come to all of us that we can be rightly aligned, rightly associated, rightly moving, rightly busy, rightly working, rightly doing. In Jesus' name, all that you want us to be doing and let us become completely unstuck from any routine, environment, atmosphere, relationships, connections, environments, places, people, things, whatever it is that causes us to crumble or to become uninspired, unstoked, or, and to become stuck and to, and to get into a routine that's not productive in any way, in any facet of life. Let those all be broken in Jesus' name. And I prophesy right now that you're causing us to come into right now the greatest day of productivity and action and activity that we've ever had in our life. We've never had it this good. Even in seasons that we got a lot done, certain seasons, and other seasons not, other seasons yes, but what's coming now will surpass everything put together of what has been. The positive and the negative, all of it will be swallowed up. It was done. Now there's a new season, and the Lord said the latter house will be greater than the former house. But I heard this again. What was good before is still good now. You need to believe for that and stir that thing up again and stoke that thing up again. And where you were at before in that season of time to cause that uh, uh, connection and walk in successful things... And you need to kick that back in. But there's something greater that's coming that hasn't been before because you've, you've developed into somebody greater over this time, over time. 
So the Lord is saying, I want you to become unstuck. I want you to become productive and purpose-filled. And I want you to be in the place of productivity that you can do all that I want you to do. And this is the word of the Lord, says the Lord. I'm Thomas Manton IV. Thank you for being uh, an online partner. Somebody just sent a great seed uh, this morning, and I didn't recognize the name, which shows me that people are out there listening. And I want to send you, if you'll get me your address, I will send you this book, uh, Diamond Keys for Your Success, and also this great DVD that I did on the power to create wealth as my appreciation gift to you for sowing into this our world missions and we're doing so much around the world and helping so many people and it's going to increase so fire get unstuck and get purpose filled and get busy in the plan of action right now those four things the fire of God touching you and then get unstuck from anything that's holding you back and then get in the right situations purpose-filled situations relationships connections and use of your time and then get busy on the projects that God's giving you to do in Jesus name and I believe those four things are coming to pass in your life you need to sow a seed I really feel this right now you need to sow a seed uh, on that endeavor for the harvest in those four areas and also for people to be good to you, to help give you favor and open doors for you. Favor with God and with men, you'll have it. Luke 2.52, was it? Yeah, favor with God and with men. And uh, that that's a harvest. And just great financial increase for what you need. And the freeing of any money that's tied up. I declare it right now. Any money that's held up, that's, that's marked for you, it will be released to you now in Jesus' name by the power of heaven. Nothing can hold it back. I release it right now, prophetically in Jesus' name. The anointing is here for this right now. Father, thank you for your, the touch of heaven. There'll be uh, notes on the screen. You can share this broadcast, please. It's very encouraging for a lot of people and very prophetic right now for a lot of people. I know that. And ways you can sow and get in touch with us, and I'll look to hear from you, and I will see you here on the next broadcast. I'm praying for you. And remember the words of our great, great uh, predecessor in the prophetic, the, pro the great prophet Isaiah, who said, I am the Lord your God who will teach you to profit and lead you in the way you should go. Profit, being led to profit, being taught to profit and led in the way you should go. Those are four things. Taught and led to come into profit and the way you should go. The four things. And, and that matches the four things I was saying. To become filled with the fire of God, the touch of God, and then get unstuck from everything wrong. And then get full of purpose as far as planning and the right connections and the right situations and the right places and all that. The right atmosphere and environment. And then get busy in the projects that God's ordained for you to do. And you'll see. And I want to pray the matching of those two together. So let's sow a seed in honor of Isaiah 48, 17. We could just make a prayer over that. Your generous love gift, whatever it is. And when I receive that from you, get me your address somehow and I will send you my great book on the benefits of excellence and also this great teaching on the power to create wealth. The content in these are out of this world. You've not heard them anywhere. And uh, very unique and very potent, very powerful. Life-altering for the better. In Jesus' name. I'm Thomas Manton IV. Love you much. And I'll talk to you on the next broadcast. I am praying for you. In Jesus' name. Love you.